In the very first chapter of One Piece, Shank sacrifices his arm and gives the seven-year-old Luffy his straw hat. This is to inspire Luffy to become king of the pirates, and at the same time, Luffy begs Shanks to let him join the Red Hat Pirates. However, Shanks refuses so that Luffy can create his own crew ten years later when he's 17, which kicks off the story that we know today. But this makes us wonder what would have happened if Shanks had actually let Luffy join his crew? What if instead of creating the straw hats, Luffy had become a red hair pirates. Our story of course starts right at the beginning of One Piece when Luffy meets Shanks for the very first time. Luffy and Shanks are the exact same people as in the main storyline. The only thing that needs to change here is that Luffy actually gets to join the crew before the red hair pirates leave his village. So we gotta ask ourselves, why doesn't Shanks allow Luffy to join in the first place? Well he actually gives us not one but three reasons. One because Luffy can't swim, because he is too young, and because the pirate life would be too dangerous for him. And I hope you agree that none of these are probably the real reason. I mean, Shanks himself was found by the first Pirate King Goldie Roger as a baby, so Shanks was part of one of the most dangerous pirate crews when he was Luffy's age, and it doesn't look like he regretted even a single moment of it. And yes, it's true that Luffy can't swim, but the same goes for literally any other Devil Fruit user ever. And we even see that the rest of Shanks' crew is actually actually very much in favor of Luffy joining as well, so what is Shanks' real reason to leave Luffy behind? Well, one possibility is that Shanks literally can't take Luffy because he cannot swim. One really interesting fact about Shanks' crew is that not a single one of his members have eaten a devil fruit. So maybe Shanks knows a place that you can only swim to and therefore he doesn't allow any non-swimmers to join his crew. Or maybe it's because Shanks wanted Luffy to grow and prove himself without the help help of a Yonko. After all, if you've watched any of my past What If videos, you will know that I strongly believe that Shanks was planning for Luffy to become Pirate King right from the start of the story. So maybe Ichiro Oda, the author of One Piece, simply did it because otherwise he wouldn't have been able to write the story the way he wanted to. Now I'm sure that we'll get an answer for this in the future, but for now let's assume that after Luffy eats his devil fruit, Shanks actually changes his mind. If Luffy's the one who will become Pirate King and change the world, he figures the safe the way to get there is by training and protecting Luffy himself. And Luffy is of course extremely hyped about this. He is now officially the cabin boy of the Red Hair Pirates. And from here on out, the flow of the story starts to change quite dramatically. The incidents with the mountain bandits in the bar still happens, Luffy is still enraged about Shanks not fighting back, but Ben Beckman tells him that he will understand one day why Shanks did it, puts Luffy on his shoulders, and the Red Hair Pirates leave Luffy's island the very same day. Day. And this means that Luffy is never kidnapped by the mountain bandits and as a result Shanks never loses his arm. Now as you probably know, Shanks actually sacrificed his stronger arm that he used to hold his sword with. In the main storyline, before he let the Sea King bite it off to inspire Luffy, Shanks was actually able to fight on the same level as Dracul Mihawk, the world's strongest swordsman. So if Luffy would actually join Shanks' crew, Shanks actually keeps his legendary sword fighting abilities which is a huge game changer. Now this may already seem like a pretty big change, but it is nothing compared to this next one. And so in this version of the story, Luffy only knows about Ace from his grandfather's stories, and he only learns about Sabo years later when running into the Revolutionary Army. As a result, the three of them never become brothers, which as you will see, will make Marineford completely different. But Ace still joins the Whitebeard Pirates, of course. Now since Shanks didn't save Luffy's life from the Sea King, Luffy doesn't get inspired to become Pirate King. His new dream instead is to become the strongest pirate in Shanks' crew and make his captain Pirate King instead. However, just how Whitebeard was secretly planning for Ace to find the One Piece and take over the Whitebeard pirates in the end, Shanks is also planning to make Luffy Pirate King one day. After all, Luffy has still eaten his unique devil fruit and he still resembles Shanks' former captain Roger. So while the Red Hair pirates are sailing away from Luffy's home island and having a welcome party for their newest member, Shanks suddenly becomes very serious. Purposefully sail the ship into the calm belt, where the giant sea kings attack any ship that tries to cross through it. Now Luffy himself is shocked at the giant creature suddenly towering above the ship, but Shanks has been waiting for just this moment, right Gojo? 
<laughs> Clouds suddenly appear in the sky as the man with the strongest Conqueror's hockey in the world knocks out all of the giant sea monsters with one single burst of hockey. The planks of the ship itself creak under the pressure, but Shanks, who just like Rayleigh in the auction house on Sabaody, has perfect control over his powers, has excluded the seven-year-old Luffy from its effect. And of course, Luffy at that moment, as you can imagine, looks at Shanks like he is some sort of god. And this is exactly what Shanks has been hoping for. Just like in the main storyline, after sacrificing his arm, he makes Luffy promise to become a strong pirate and one day surpass him. And even in this storyline, I still think that he would give Luffy the straw hat that he had gotten from Roger as a kid as well. So instead of training with Ace and Sabo in the jungles of the island, Luffy now grows up on Shanks' ship. As you can imagine, he very quickly grows incredibly close to all of the main crew members who now raise him instead of the bandits. And of course, there are still a lot of similarities to our main timeline Luffy. He has a very similar dream that drives him to become stronger. He still has his straw hat. He still lives a life of freedom, training, eating, and sleeping under the stars. And he still has a strong sense of justice and wants to help people. However, the red hair pirates aren't mountain bandits. And so a few years after joining the crew, Shanks becomes known as one of the four emperors of the sea. In other words, he now has one of the four strongest pirate crews in the world who are now all training Luffy. And so as you would expect, this changes how Luffy develops drastically compared compared to growing up with Ace and Sabo. Don't worry, Luffy is still able to run and goof around quite a lot. For example, I could totally see him having a great time with Monster, this monkey that is actually an officer on Shanks' crew. Shanks himself would of course teach Luffy all about hockey very early on in his life, soon realizing that Luffy also has the potential to use Conqueror's hockey, which of course surprises no one in the crew. Shanks also teaches Luffy how to fight with a sword, although just like in the actual story, I don't think Luffy would be great with swords. Instead, as you can probably tell from my thumbnail, I think it would be really cool if Luffy got inspired by Ben Beckman and Usopp's father Yasopp to start using a gun. As we know, Luffy himself isn't stupid. He just doesn't know much about the world because he was raised by mountain bandits and running around with his brothers all day in the jungle. On board of Shanks' ship, however, I think Luffy would still be his normal freeding loving self, always hungry, but get a really good education about all types of things on top. This includes geography, the different races that exist, the balance of the powers between marines, the warlords, and the emperors, and so on and so forth. Oda has revealed after all that Ben Beckman is the smartest person from the East. East Blue in the world. So it would be really interesting to see Luffy take on a slightly more serious and calculating side with his influence. And of course, maybe most importantly, his outfit would look significantly more badass than it does for most of the main storyline. Oh, and uh, speaking of Yasop, not only do I see him teaching Luffy how to use a gun and observation hockey, but there is another thing that I could totally see happening. Other two what if videos I've made so far about what if Luffy was never born or what if Luffy became a marine, a common theme is that Usopp always dies. After all, without Luffy and Zoro coming to fight the Kudo pirates, Usopp's village is simply overrun and the entire island is taken out. And so since people have been complaining in the comments a lot about killing of Usopp every time, I think we finally found a scenario to keep him alive. Because if Shanks allows Luffy to join, even though he's too young, well, why shouldn't Yasopp get his son as well. Not only do we know that he felt extremely guilty for leaving Usopp behind in the first place, but both Usopp and Luffy would have someone their own age in the crew. And I'm sure that Shanks would approve of this as well, considering he grew up with Buggy on Roger's ship too. And so in this version of the story, the Red Hair Pirates actually drop by Syrup Village to pick up Usopp, who also goes on to become a brave warrior of the sea and one of the most powerful fighters in the world, this time growing up without any daddy issues. Now, since there's no one with a devil fruit in Shanks' crew, you might think that Luffy's devil fruit powers might get neglected here. But when you really think about it, Luffy also had no one else with a devil fruit growing up either around him, and he still managed to develop his skills just fine. In fact, I would argue that Shanks and Co. not only have fought with enough powerful devil fruit users to teach Luffy the basics and help him develop different techniques, but 
on top of that, they also know the actual truth about his unique devil fruit. And so to unlock his true potential, they may tell him about the true power of his abilities, or at least guide him to the right decisions. So I would expect Luffy to awaken his devil fruit powers at a quite young age. Isn't that right, Gojo? After all, after becoming a Yonko, Shanks would spend most of his time in the new world where he started to establish his own territory. And so Luffy would undoubtedly run into tons of skirmishes and other larger battles with other powerful pirate groups and marines all the time, giving him more and more chances to practice his abilities. This of course also includes encounters with the likes of Big Mom, Kaido and Whitebeard. Which would be cool because especially during the latter, he would befriend Ace as a rival since they are both from the same island and have the same grandfather. And then, once he would actually awaken his devil fruit, Shanks for the first time would tell Luffy about Laugh Tail and being part of Roger's crew, igniting the spark in Luffy to go see the final island for himself. Which now brings us to the point where Luffy actually starts his adventure in the main storyline. What is going to happen to all of the other Straw Hats? Oh, but before we get into that, it's a new year, but luckily some of the best things in life do stay the same, like my partnership with my favorite snack box company, Boxu. Now, Boxu has not only been supporting supporting this channel for almost an entire year now, but they've also kept sending me these delicious snack boxes every month to make sure that I fail with my fitness goals within pretty much the first month of 2023. Actually, originally they sent me their Shinshu New Year box, which I accidentally ate completely before recording, so they actually surprised me with their special Sakura in Kyoto box instead. That's right, cherry blossom season is around the corner, and Boxu has worked with family businesses all over Japan to deliver a box packed with limited edition Sakura themed snacks. I mean, look at all this fantastic stuff. I would probably sell my cat for more of these matcha cookies. Actually, uh, let me try some of these Sakura cookies first. Uh, they're both absolutely delicious. And in case you don't know the drill yet, you can use my code OHARA15 for 15 bucks off your very first own Boxu Japanese snack box. Because at this point, Luffy has already become a real monster that is well known throughout the world, who has established himself as one of Shanks' core crew members. As you can imagine, without Luffy there to save them, many of the Straw Hats would be doomed and the East Blue Saga would become pretty damn dark. If you really wanted to, you could of course say that Luffy is strong enough at this point to just start his own pirate crew and still meets his original people, but way stronger this time. By the way, if you're interested in the video about what that would look like with a super powerful Gear 5 Luffy, make sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments. But I don't think that it would be the most natural thing for Luffy to do at this point right now. But at least we have saved Uso. So that's something, right? Well, when Luffy joins Shanks' crew, he never gets to save Kobe from Alvida ship. He also doesn't make it to the marine base where Zoro is being starved to death. And as a result, the strongest sword in the world doesn't survive. Meanwhile at the Baratier, Sanji stays there as a cook, but I believe that the Vinsmoke family would still find out about him sooner or later and would still try to marry him off for their alliance with Big Mom. And as a result, Sanji would get assassinated at the wedding party with Pudding. Meanwhile, Arlong steals all of Nami's savings and then forces her to keep working as a cartographer for many more years. Now, moving on to the Grand Line, here it is a lot more likely that Luffy might actually encounter at least some of the Straw Hats. After all, the Yonko and their crews are all moving around the Grand Line all the time. And we also know that Shanks has been growing his crew quite a bit since he first met Luffy 10 years ago. So really, it would not be that hard for Luffy to convince him to let someone else join. Now, first of all, Luffy would definitely get to meet Crocus, who just like Shanks, is a former member of the Roger Pirates. In the actual official timeline, Shanks actually told both Rayleigh and Crocus about Luffy who were waiting for him at the entrance of the first and second half of the Grand Line, respectively. Crocus telling Luffy about Love Tail and giving the crew the log pose, while Rayleigh helped Luffy train and get stronger for two full years. So in this version of the story, Shanks also introduces Luffy to Crocus directly, and Luffy gets to meet Laboom and promise him to come back. Chopper could really go either way. I mean, it's definitely possible that Shanks and co make a stop at Drum Island at some point, and Luffy Luffy just picks him up, but at the same time, he might also just 
never go there and Chopper simply ends up living with Dr. Kureha under Walpole's terrible rule. Robin would either stay with Crocodile who would most likely succeed in taking over Alabasta or Luffy might run into her at some point and make her join as well. We actually don't know if Shanks has anyone in his crew right now that is capable of reading the Poneglyphs but in case there is not, Robin would be an incredibly valuable asset. NL is of course still going to the moon. Pretty much nothing changes here. Frankie stays on Water 7 but would probably be discovered by Lucci and ZP9 at some point during their undercover mission to get the plans of Pluton. And as usual, Brooke sooner or later gets his shadow back when Moria is inevitably defeated at some point and Brooke becomes a global superstar. Now Luffy does of course meet Rayleigh on Saba Ori Archipelago though. Just like with Crocus, Shanks introduces the person that Roger has been waiting for to his former vice captain. Now, Crocus decided to stay behind because he wanted to take care of Laboon. But with Rayleigh, I could absolutely see him joining the Red Hair Pirates to help with Luffy's training and to make sure that he ends up finding the One Piece in order to change the world. Which now brings us to the Ward Marine Ford, which does get really, really interesting in this specific scenario. Now, even though Luffy and Ace never became brothers, Ace still goes after Blackbeard. He still gets captured and the war between Whitebeard and the Marines is still bound to happen. Only that this time, while Luffy is definitely angry, he doesn't have the exact same motivation to actually go and save Ace. Instead, he accompanies Shanks to Wano, who is trying to stop Kaido to get involved in the war as well, as he does in the main storyline. Now, this of course means that the prison break in Impel Down never happens, which would mean that Jimbei stays in prison, while Blackbeard and his crew are all defeated by Magellan when they try to invade the prison. But let's actually assume for a second that Blackbeard and his crewmates actually actually managed to go down all the way to level 6. Because in that case, Blackbeard would once again tell all the level 6 prisoners that the last person surviving in their cell could join his crew. Which would mean that Jinbei would most likely end up joining Blackbeard's crew, even if it would be kind of against his will. Now one big question is of course, how did Shanks manage to stop Kaido from joining the war in the first place? Who knows, maybe the two crews actually fought, but when Shanks and his men arrive at Marine Fort, in the main storyline, they don't look like they've just fought a gigantic dragon. So instead, I think it's much more likely that Shanks actually just went and talked to Kaido. And so while the two Yonko would have a meeting on Onigashima, Luffy would surely run around and finally run into no one other than Yamato. Luffy then tells Yamato about Ace being captured and about his upcoming execution. And since Yamato is of course friends with Ace, she wants to come and save him. As a result, Luffy secretly frees Yamato from her shackles and smuggles her on board of Shanks' ship. Then they finally make it to Marineford, but just like in the main storyline, it is already too late. Ace has been killed and Blackbeard has gone in and stolen Whitebeard's devil fruit. Now, Shanks and his men are once again able to stop the war. This time, Luffy is actually part of the epic intro of the Red Hair Pirates. He transforms into his awakened form and stands between Aokiji and Marco. The Gorosei and many people who are watching the live broadcast of the war are shocked at Luffy's true appearance. Sengoku, after a quick moment of shock, announces to the world once again that Luffy is the son of Monkey D. Dragon, the world's most wanted man and an officer of the Red Hair Pirates. Now Luffy himself, meanwhile, is completely unfazed by all this. Instead, he has to stop Yamato from attacking Akainu, who is mocking Ace. And while Shanks is negotiating with Sengoku about taking Ace's and Whitebeard's bodies to bury them, Luffy rushes to his grandfather who is heartbroken about Ace's death. Now after the war, things could go in many different directions. I could either see Luffy actually leaving Shanks' crew to find his own path and crew, or Luffy stays with Shanks and soon overtakes Ben Beckman as the second strongest man in the crew and Shanks' right hand man. In that case, Shanks would most likely start preparation to reach Love Tail soon and make Luffy Pirate King. Or a third alternative would be that that Luffy passes on his straw hat to someone else, like Momonosuke for example, encouraging the next generation to find the One Piece and change the world. But if you want to go down a really crazy route, think about this. What if Luffy didn't fight as part of Shanks' crew at Marineford? What if he had fought next to Akainu, Kizaru and Aokiji? In other words, what would have happened if instead of a pirate, Luffy had become a marine? To find out, you can simply click right here and watch that video. Thanks for watching.